Hi, Nancy Hickson here with another of our ladies studies with the International Academy of Biblical Studies. We're doing these ladies classes and we are looking at the virtuous woman of Proverbs chapter 31 and we have looked at what the virtuous woman does for her family, what she does for others, and we're looking at what she does for herself and then we will also look at what she does with her time with her heart and with her words and right now in looking at what she does for herself we're looking at personal bible study and how we can put our personal bible study into our life make it a daily part of our life and really plan for that personal bible study um, our previous lesson right before this one we looked at doing a character study we looked at a character study of Ruth from the Old Testament very briefly we went through um, kind of an outline of what you could do for a character study and then kind of took the character of Ruth and very quickly applied that to that outline and we um, I, I showed you I like to um, have a notebook and I'm using this one that I made you can use a spiral notebook um, a journal of any size whatever you have to write in but I really encourage you to have a notebook to write down your daily Bible studies in um, and like I said last time for a couple of reasons one I think it takes a little more thought to write something down rather than just reading the scripture and, and meditating on it I think to actually take pen or pencil to paper takes a little more thought you have to put a little more brain work into it when you're writing it down you'll remember it better that way and then you'll also have it as a reference for the future to go back and look at if something comes up and and you want to study again about that or maybe a question comes up with kind of the same idea that you had studied previously and you can go back and look at it and see what you had written see what scripture references maybe you had written down but it'll be um, as you fill up your notebook an invaluable tool of study and helps as you try to walk the Christian life um, we talked about the different types of personal Bible study that you could do um, like I said we did the the character study and you know you can you don't have to do all of it in one sitting you can take it just part by part and like I said I like to have a plan to have at least a few days if not the whole week planned out for what my study is going to be so that I know each day I've, I've got a study ready I don't have to just sit down and like okay what am I going to study today you've got a plan ready you know exactly where to go and and what to study and you can do that with the character study what we're going to look at today is taking a book of the Bible and and doing a study of that and you can certainly there are several different ways you could kind of outline a week's worth of studies by looking at a book of the Bible um, the the book that we're going to look at for an example of doing a study we're going to look at the book of Colossians and we talked a little bit last time about um, how to look up a scripture reference and um, again just kind of as a brief review you've got the books of the Old Testament the books of the New Testament and Colossians being one of the books of the New Testament and like I said before I really really encourage you to memorize the order of the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament it makes it so much easier to look up um, a book chapter verse a scripture reference if you know the order of the books so we look up Colossians and then each book well except for a couple of exceptions have chapters and so within the chapters it starts with verse 1 and goes through the end of the chapter and then there would be chapter 
2, which again starts over again with verse number 1, goes to the end of the chapter. Then, as in Colossians, chapter 3 starts over again with verse number 1 and goes through to the end. So you get the idea of each book has its chapters, and then each chapter has its verses. So you would look it up by the name of the book, and then what chapter number you're referencing, and then what verse number within that chapter. So in looking at Colossians, or looking at any uh, book study that we would want to do, for our personal Bible study, I would think definitely the first thing we'd want to do is read through the book. So, you know, that might take, depending on what you have chosen to study, might take more than one um, allotted period that you have for your daily Bible study. I think for Colossians, you could certainly do it um, within a, a reasonable time frame to read through Colossians once and then go back once you've read through it once kind of have very vaguely in mind the um the direction of the book you want to answer some questions about it that you can hopefully possibly answer from the reading you want to think about who wrote the book and maybe why it was written or um to whom it was written and then you want to think about maybe some some key scriptures that were in it, some key verses, some key ideas. And in that, you're wanting to look at it from, from your personal perspective, from where you are studying it right now, today. As you read through it, what verses jump out at you and and really are meaningful to you or jump out at you as you think, oh, I really want to study that some more. I want to give that some more thought. Um, you know, I'm not saying take the book of Colossians and then uh, break it down and and say what was the, the main thought of it, what was the author's um, outline and their purpose in it, and what are the key verses as seen by everyone that has studied the book of Colossians, I'm saying you study it from your perspective and and you study it and see what verses are really important to you where you stand right now today in your Christian life. Um, so let's start out by looking at the book of Colossians and let's answer just a few very basic questions by who was it written by? And we can look at um, the first few verses and we see that verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy our brothers, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. So from these two verses, we see that Paul wrote this letter and we see someone who was with him as he wrote this letter. And we see that it was written to the saints, the faithful Christians at Colossae. So we know that Paul wrote it, Timothy was with him, and it was written to faithful Christians in Colossae. So that we is, is important to know because we know Paul is talking to faithful, believing Christians, baptized believers who are have been taught the Word of God. So this is, this is important as we go through the study. So we know that Timothy was with Paul when he wrote this. Now, just as a little more background information, if you jump on down to verse 7, Paul mentions, and I never can pronounce this man's name right, Epaphras, beloved fellow servant, a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. So we have another man mentioned here, 
And then in verse uh, chapter 4, so flip on over to chapter 4 and verses 7 uh, through 9, we read of Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Now, we read of those two men, Onesimus and Tychicus. And if we do a little further study, and, you know, this is something that maybe won't come right away as, as you're studying the Bible, but as you read a little more of the Bible, you might turn over to the book of Philemon, which, now this is one of those books that has the exception. It is just, it's basically one chapter. There's no chapter divisions of Philemon because it's just one chapter. So if you turn over to Philemon, which is just a few uh, books over in the New Testament, you'll see it just has verses listed. There's no chapter heading because it's just that one chapter. But we see in the, the book of Philemon, which again, Paul was the writer, he mentions some of the same people in this book. So in doing just a little extra reading and studying, we can get a little more background on the book we're studying. So in in reading Philemon, and you know, if you know the, the story of Philemon, Onesimus was the slave who had run away and Paul was sending Onesimus back to Philemon and was asking Philemon, you know, accept him as a brother in Christ because he is he is now a um, a baptized believer. And so a lot of the same people are mentioned in this book of Philemon as in Colossians. So we can kind of get a lot of the same background information from different books and the same would go for in the new testament when you read the book of acts you can get a lot of background information on the um epistles in the new testament the the um the letters that paul wrote you can get background information in the book of acts about those the churches they were written to and um the the times that they were written from studying. So the more you study, the more you're going to see how everything ties together. And here, as we look at Colossians, we see that the book of Philemon is very closely tied to the book of Colossians. But, you know, even, even if we didn't look at the background of that, the, the, the people that are they're mentioned and everything, if we just look at the the text of Colossians, there's so much we can gather from this. And like I said, you would want to read it and then go back and read it again and think about those verses that really your your mind takes note of as you read it. Because those are things that are something that is maybe going on in your life that those verses just kind of jump out and maybe highlight something going on. And and it's um, something that, that you want to stop and take notice of. And maybe it's something that, that you want to study a little more. So um, let's just a few, just as an example of looking at Colossians, I have um, written down a few scripture references in Colossians that um, I think are important or things that at the time as I was reading it really jumped out at me. The first thing I want to take note of is in Colossians chapter 3 and verses 18, 19, and 20. And it's... Um, goes along with things we've been studying in this class um, previously. 
uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 18, 19, and 20. Um, some have called this the rules for Christian households. It says, Wives, submit to your husband as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. So in these three verses... We have something for wives, something for husbands, and something for children. So these, we, you know, we could be reading this Colossians and we could think, oh, we just studied this in Proverbs about the virtuous woman and her relationship with her husband and being submissive to her husband. And we could think about how this is, it reinforces what we've studied and We could springboard from this to um, more studies of the wives or of the husband or of the children or of the family in general. So uh, these verses, I think, are important to look at. Um, Some other verses that um, I wanted to just make mention of that as we look at Colossians, that might be something that you would want to do a further study of. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1 and look at verses 9 through 14. Colossians 1 verses 9 through 14. And so from this day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to His glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy." giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. So, looking at these verses, we see specifically in verse 10, that we are to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. So we think about walking in a manner worthy of the Lord. Then if you go on down to chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, this kind of same idea comes out. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So, here in chapter 2, the same idea of walking in Christ or worthy of the Lord, our Christian walk, um, something that definitely we would want to study and really look at in, in deeper detail. And then flip on over to chapter 4 of Colossians. This same walk, Christian walk idea comes out in verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So, in these three passages we have of Colossians, we have reference to our walk. How we should walk worthy of the Lord, how we should walk in Christ, and how we should walk in wisdom. And look at chapter 3, Colossians 3, verse 16. We also read, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another 
in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So here the idea of the walking in wisdom, teaching one another in wisdom, the we all this we're gathering just from our study of Colossians. So we see our our walk, our way of life, what it should be like. And then let's take this just a step further in our study. And if you have a Bible that has scripture references in it, um, this Bible, I don't know if you can see, but it has references here in the side column on each page. There's references here. Some Bibles will have the references down the center column, like the copy of this Bible that I made. Um, the references are down the center column. Now, if you first start studying and you look at these references, you know, you may think, oh my goodness, what on earth is, is this talking about? What are all these little numbers and letters and, and all this? Well, it's, it's pretty easy to figure out. Let's look at, um, let's see, let's take, for example, um, well, I've got this one blown up where you can hopefully see it. We talked about the, um, in verse chapter 3, verse 18, the wives submit to your husband. In, in this one, if you can see, uh, you may not be able to, but verse 18, wives submit to your own husbands. And at the beginning of that verse, verse 18, there's a little a, a lowercase a, in front of the wives there. So then if you come down here to the center column, and you look, there are numbers here. These are verses numbers. Here are the big numbers. And if you look for verse 18 here, then there is going to be a lowercase a, which refers to this lowercase a, and it's going to give you a scripture reference that is related to this phrase. And this gives us 1 Peter chapter 3, and verse 1. So real quick, just so we can see how this will refer us, let's see what verse First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. And what does it say? We've studied this before. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. So it's the same same idea there of being subject to your husband. And so with the lowercase a, we find the verse 18, find the verse down here, and then the lowercase a, and it gives us the scripture reference that goes along with it. So if you have a Bible that has the references here or in the side column like this Bible that I have, you can sometimes look up other verses in the Bible that are related to the verse you are looking at. So in looking at the Colossians chapter 1, the walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, I looked up and in Ephesians chapter 4, I found a reference of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And that reads, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So, in Colossians, here we read, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in knowledge of God. But then if we go to that scripture reference of Ephesians chapter 4, which our 
little references either on the side or in the center could take us to, we get a little more insight into walking worthy and we see that that includes humility, gentleness, patience, and bearing with one another in love. So our worthy walk in the Lord also includes humility, gentleness, patience, bearing in love. So all that we gather from Colossians and we can go to Ephesians and see that. Then if we look, go to the um, chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus in the Lord, so walk in Him. We also can look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. Another reference. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that you receive from us how you ought to walk to please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. So again, the reference of walking pleasing to God, walking in Christ pleasing to God. And um, back in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, kind of a commentary on pleasing to God and um, seeking the things that are above. Verse 2 says, Set your minds on the things that are above and not on things of the earth. So when we want to walk in Christ and be pleasing to God, we can see from here in Colossians, just in our study, as we go through the verses, we see Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set our mind on things that are above and not on things of the earth. Our thinking should be geared toward our goal of heaven. That's what our ultimate goal is, what our aim in life is heaven, and that's what should be directing us. That's what our mind should be on, not what the important, unimportant things on earth What's important in our life is our goal of heaven. And that's what our focus should be. And that's what should be guiding our life. That's what should be guiding our walk. Then the uh, Colossians chapter 4 verses 5 and 6. If we follow um, the uh, reference 5 and 6 says, Walk in wisdom toward our outsiders, making the best use of, use of time. Let your speech also Always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So, look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 through 17. A little more commentary on that verse in Colossians. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So you see in Colossians, the verse says, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of time. And then we look in Ephesians, it says basically the same thing. Be careful, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise but wise, making the best use of time. And then we see then how are we to be wise? How can we be wise? In verse 17, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That's what makes us wise. That's what makes our walk wise. If we understand the will of the Lord. And in these daily Bible studies, that's what will help us understand the will of the Lord. And that's what will give us these, this um, correct daily walk with Christ and pleasing to God. 
So as you go through a, a study of a book, like we've just looked at some highlights of some verses in Colossians, you could go through and you could highlight the verses that you felt were either ones that you wanted to study more or just that were really important to you at this point in your Christian life and then take section by section and plan out, okay, today I'm going to study this section, tomorrow this one, the next day this one. You could have several days or a whole week blocked out of studying the different scriptures within the book. And then you could chase down the references that go along with those verses in the, the columns of your Bible. It could be in reading other books you remember that oh I remember reading um, you know in Ephesians that verse about the um, the walk in um, our Christian walk and you could go back and, and hunt that down even if you didn't have a reference a scripture reference to it you could go back and read through Ephesians and find it so there are many different um, possibilities there for daily multiple days of daily Bible study and then one other um, thing and this is where we will pick up with our next study look at Colossians chapter 3 verses it's basically verses 5 through 17 um, we won't go into it right now but it's the old man versus the new man. Putting off the old man, putting on the new man. We have um, that study in Colossians, and then we have a very similar study in Ephesians. We're going to look at those two. We're gonna see how we can go from Colossians, look at Ephesians, and then really do a specific study into, okay, what is involved in putting off the old man, putting on the new man, that that biblical teaching of old man versus new man we're going to look at that and all that springs from just our our one book study of colossians which can then take us into old man versus new man which you will see then could be a whole nother full week study of of different bible studies so you can see it this just blossoms and grows as as you study you see the possibility for so many different areas you could go and that's why you want to have a notebook to write down like okay I, I want to do a study on the Christian walk so write that down then I want to do a study on the old man versus new man write that down so you'll have that ready to take the next study on and you've got you won't forget where it was you won't forget what the scripture reference was and you'll be ready to use that as your next study so our our next class will be on taking the study from colossians chapter 3 and then looking at ephesians chapter 4 the old man versus new man and how we can develop a whole week's worth or more of study on just that one biblical principle and the same idea with other biblical principles. So let's um, end this class again with a prayer and um, hope everyone has been able to um, get something profitable from this. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you again for this opportunity we have had to get together as Christian women and study your word. We thank you for the Bible that you have given us, for the wonderful wisdom that's in it, for the guiding light it gives us to our life. Please help us to apply our study and apply the study to our lives so that we can become better Christians and uh, walk a better Christian walk from our Bible studies. Please be with each lady that is participating in this study. Please bless us all. Bless us in your service. In Christ's name, amen.